Mildred K. Betbeza. No one else has a name like Mildred K. Betbeza. No one else is cool enough to have a first name that means gentle strength, a last name from a member of the swing set, and a middle name so secret it grants a bit of power just to know what the middle initial is. If you know what the initial stands for, you get fire hands. Fire hands are always cool. There's also no one else who gets to be chased through the sewers of Salt Lake City by a group of fully suited up zombified varsity football players chanting kick, tackle, football, kick, tackle, football, kick, tackle. My mum always warned me about you football players, yelled Mildred's best friend since first grade, Aisha Z. Rusif, as she ran side by side with Mildred. So I guess she also gets the privilege of being chased through a sewer. But her name's Aisha Rusif, not Mildred Betbeza. Aisha wondered what her mum would say if she could have seen what she was doing. Her father was a football player and susceptible to being hypnotised just like these guys. But that's a story about a family vacation to the rainforest that turned out rather interesting as Mildred was along for that vacation also. A story for another time, though. Mildred stands five foot six, a 105 pounds, and possesses a keen sense of fashion, if you consider a keen sense of fashion to be someone who wears black cowboy boots, orange jeans and a black peacoat jacket worn over a variety of coloured t-shirts. This place smells worse than my bedroom, Aisha commented during the action. Not even close, Mildred thought to herself, having experienced that bedroom many times. Aisha's room was legendarily messy. Turn left, Mildred yelled, as Aisha followed her down a different tunnel with an even worse smell than the one they'd been running down for the past twenty minutes. Aisha's five foot four and a hundred and twenty pounds of attitude. Unlike her friend, she hasn't taken to thinking of her clothes as some sort of symbolic uniform, but then again she doesn't have any beyond human abilities. But superhuman powers are sort of boring to get into detail about, and we'll get to that later. Aisha also goes for a more 1950s tomboy look in her dress style than trying to stand out in any way. Because, you know, a 1950s dress style in 2013 doesn't stand out in any way. But then again, this is Utah. Aisha was surprised how clean these sewers actually were. Yes, the smell's worse than any boy's gym locker or late night find from the back of the refrigerator. But TV has lied to her over the years. There weren't any rats, formerly flushed alligators or poops floating. Or at least, none she'd seen so far. A few years ago, Salt Lake City spent a lot of money totally refurbishing the city's sewer systems to make it the most advanced and effective set of sewer systems in the world. Step one in the plan to make the City of the Saints the City of the Future. A lot of cities going for that title, though. It's a big ego thing. Mildred and Aisha ran, or more aptly sloshed, their way through the thigh-high brown waters. The good news was the zombified football players kept falling from time to time, so they weren't going to catch up with them any time soon. Cleats in sewers proved ineffective as footwear for the unfolding scene. Up! yelled Mildred, and she wasn't talking to any zombified football player that had fallen down in the muck. They both stopped suddenly and started climbing up a ladder. I hope you know where you're going. I'm not a fan of being trapped in any sort of maze. Minotaurs tend to turn up, remember? Wine, wine, wine. I have an eidetic memory. It's good for playing go fish with cops and remembering layouts. I glanced once at City Hall. 
Mildred easily pushed up the thick manhole cover, and as they both climb up and out, Aisha said, I wish I had an eidetic memory and beyond human strength and other stuff. Right now I just wish I was dry, though. God, I'm going to need ten showers after this. Mildred replaced the manhole cover. A strength that comes and goes is totally unreliable. Yeah, me, I still have to rely mainly on the things that don't start with super. Aisha's the only person Mildred ever showed any sort of weakness around. With her best friend she can have flaws and faults. Otherwise she has to remember to always speak with her Girl Scout Gold Award in mind. Aisha turned over a large crate that tumbled onto the manhole cover. She tapped against the sign on the side of the crate that read, Hand Weights, Quantity, 200. That should keep them down there. I wish I could dump weights on the heads of football players every day. Aisha then notices where they are. It was the clear-cut high school, the school they attended as eighth graders, and they found themselves in the still under-construction gymnastics gymnasium, the place they had eighth-grade orientation in. It smelled like old people. "'You ran us in circles back here to the smell of Grandma Wilson!' Aisha stated the facts to Mildred, trying to be sarcastic. "'Zombified people make me itch, so I'd rather not touch. Matter of fact, most magical things bother me,' Mildred told her. Aisha put her head in her hands in frustration. "'So that's our only purpose for being here, your icky-dicky issues. "'We still have to get to the bottom of everything that's going on, "'and all of these are connected to sports somehow,' Mildred explained. "'At least, no, Aisha was interrupted by every door in the gymnasium's gym opening, "'and in walked fully uniformed cheerleaders, zombified, chanting, "'Hero of the team! Hero of the team!' Hero of... Zombies have a thing for chanting. Well, at least the ones with school spirit do. We hope you have enjoyed this free sample of The Tin Universe Middle Grade Series Book 1, written by Brian C. Williams and narrated by Stacy Taylor of Stacy's Pop Culture Parlor. Follow Stacy on Twitter at StaceBobT. Find more Tin Universe content at tinuniverse.blogspot.com. Copyright 2016 System Productions.